So today, a dramatic new confrontation between one of the members who's caught up in allegations of congressional insider trading. The chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, Spencer Bacchus, firing back against a new book and a 60 Minutes expose, which accuse him, in essence, of trading on advance information he had during the financial crisis. Let me read you an excerpt of Spencer Bacchus's letter. He says to the publisher of the book that's accusing him of this, but above all, the book's insidious allegation that I personally profited from public information is a total lie. So a lot of controversy here in Washington today, Larry, about this congressional insider trading issue. Thank you very, very much. All right, let's bring in our guest. Joining me is the aforementioned Spencer Bacchus, Republican from Alabama. He chairs the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, let me just say right at the beginning of this, we had originally scheduled the author, Peter Schweitzer, who made the allegations. Then we found Mr. Bacchus's letter, which is a very specific denial of the Schweitzer charges, and we invited Congressman Bacchus to come on. Mr. Bacchus, as you can see, has come on the show, willing to discuss it. Schweitzer pulled out at the last minute, claiming he wasn't prepared or up to speed. All right, I don't think much of that. Maybe Mr. Schweitzer's going to run and uh, hide tail from you, Spence, but you're very specific in your uh, rebuttal. And I want to come to the first point you make about G. GE stock options. Schweitzer accuses you of shorting GE on the basis of inside information. What's your take? Well, uh, Larry, I bought GE. I didn't short anything. He says, and he uses two pages to say that uh, Jeff Immelt uh, called Hank Paulson and told him uh, that GE was in dire straits. And uh, then he says that Hank Paulson and I had a meeting, or, or may have had a meeting, and at that meeting he may have told me that GE stock was going to drop. And uh, I went out the next day and shorted GE. Well, Larry, what I did the next day, and, and he needs to get his facts straight, and his facts are wrong, 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 all, all along the way. Uh, I actually bought GE stock, so uh, I bought thinking that the stock was going to go up, obviously, uh, if, uh, but I, I had no information. And uh, so, I ended so Schweitzer, up. Wait, Schweitzer says you shorted the stock, but you actually went long the stock. I went long so the stock. Has it's, the trade, it's a lie. He has the Not, trade it, wrong. He has the whole trade wrong. Oh, absolutely. And it, but it blows up the whole story, Larry, for him to say that. Uh, because, you know, he, he spends two pages saying that I probably knew that the financial sector was in trouble and GE was a financial stock. So I went out and uh, sold it short. Uh, it's, a it's a total concocted. Uh, fabrication, and he never called me to check his facts. Larry, you know, members of Congress have an ethical duty not to trade on in, insider information. Now, it's against the law. I, I've heard some say it's not against the law. It, it absolutely is against the law. Mm. It's against the law for members of Congress to trade on insider information, and they ought to be prosecuted if they do. Now. Well, Having me, said that, I, I'd go way beyond the disclosure rules, Larry, and that's one reason he decided, I guess, that he was going to single me out. Well, you're saying this is a matter of public record, that people can find out that you went long GE, not short GE. Well, and Larry, the reason he used me in his book is I'm one of the few members of Congress that actually uh, file my brokerage records mm. as opposed to, you know, most of them do these baskets with 1,000 to 10,000 or 10,000 to 100,000. They don't even put on there whether it went down or up. Uh, I've never thought that was full disclosure. Right. So I disclose. Now, he actually accused me in his book of making a risky trade by buying Apple Computer in 2007. And hey, Larry, I double my money. <laughs> okay. Is something wrong with that? You know, now, now I can't defend myself, Larry. Now I want to uh, go to these other these other points you're making, though. I, let's leave Apple aside. Schweitzer says that you bought the S and P index for financial stocks, the financial spiders, because in you July. had information in, in uh, July 14th of 2008. You say in the uh, letter to Ms. Linda Zecker, who's the head of Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, the publisher, you say actually you didn't buy the financial spiders. You bought energy spiders. Now, energy this is, spiders. A, this is yeah. another incredible factual. How does he, how can he be, why is his research so bad? Well, in fact, you know, I had said all along I buy non financial stock ETFs. 
uh, I would I don't buy financial stocks and when uh, uh, 60 minutes called and said you shorted GE stock and you bought ETFs in the financial sector I said that yeah, I, I don't think that's right let me get back to you I can't imagine doing that it actually scared me Larry and then I looked and it was energy and it was energy in July and, and energy in August uh, and you know, but somehow being on the financial services staff, talking to Paulson and Bernanke, I guess we were talking about the price of oil, Larry. I guess that's uh, going to be the next accusation. Well, okay. You also go on to say Schweitzer says that um, you were in a meeting about the rescue and legislation to rescue Fannie and Freddie on September 4th, 2008. But you say in your rebuttal, wait a minute, that meeting was actually, I'm sorry, the law was signed in July 30th of 2008. So there is no secret meeting about Fannie and Freddie. Is that your point of view? And once again, what did, why did Schweitzer at least know when this legislation was passed? Well, you know, he didn't know that. Larry, he, he actually talks about the stock market was trading at 8,600, uh, uh, a level of 8,600 and, and accusing me of doing something when it was at 11,000. He talks about uh, where I said it was going to go to uh, 8,000, uh, but uh, it was 11,000 then. And, and he said, it, you know, all his facts are wrong, Larry. I mean, it's just one after. He says in 2007 that I invested in Focus Media. He said that was an obscure Chinese advertising company. It, it was not an obscure company. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was the fastest growing uh, company uh, in the world at that time in revenue. And I did. I doubled my money. So he says it must have been something wrong with that. I must have had some information. Now, Larry, my secretary uh, heard him say that uh, on a show. And she said, you know, you don't even speak Mandarin. Mm. I mean, you know, does he really think that the Chinese officials are calling me up and tipping me off to focus media? Mm. All right, let I me mean, some Chinese stock, Larry? Uh, I what? mean, now that Steve Jobs is, is dead, I'm not going to be able to defend myself because I met with Steve Jobs. If he accuses me of, of Steve Jobs of tipping me off, how, how would I defend myself? He I, throws so many of these crazy right. accusations. I, I, I guess the, 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 the wrap-up question is this. Do you think it's a good idea for members of Congress to buy and sell individual stocks. Do you think that is a source of reform? You're going to have hearings. You've got uh, Lieberman and Collins and others. What, what's your, should members be trading stocks? Larry, I don't. Uh, I haven't since October of last year. Now, the reason I don't is because of the focus media. Somebody said you bought a stock and, and you sold it uh, weeks later and you double your money. Uh, and, and that was absolutely true. I mean, he says in the book that I'm, I'm uh, either have all kind of inside information or I'm a good trader. You know, anytime you make money, you're accused of, of you know, you must have had insider information. So my suggestion, my practice now is, uh, is not to trade. I, I don't trade anything. I went for, for a while, I traded individual stocks. I was a railroad lawyer. Uh, in fact, I bought GE because they're the only producers of diesel engines. Uh, I bought Kansas City Southern. I bought the Burlington Northern and held it and then Buffett uh, bought it. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't accuse uh, Buffett of tipping me off. Well, okay. I just, you know, other people say, by the way, Holman Jenkins of the Journal and other people say, buying and selling stocks by House members and Senate members, assuming that you don't have any inside information, aligns you with the incentives of the economy. So you can actually see what harm tax rates do or regulations. I guess that debate will go on. I am very sorry that Mr. Schweitzer backed out of this at the last minute. We were prepared, prepared to have an honest, and fair discussion between your rebuttal and his original charges. We still will welcome Schweitzer. I'll ask him the same points that you went over. Spence Backus, thank you very much for coming back to the Cudlow Report. We're continuing thank to monitor, by the way, thank what's you, happening Larry. on Capitol Hill. The Super Committee stalemate continues. What's the White House saying as the president is halfway around the world? Much more Cudlow Report after this 